All right, let's get started so I don't run over. So, hi everybody. Um, my name is Joe Carroll. I'm a technical specialist uh, in our product management group with my focus is on cloud marketplaces. Um, and welcome to fast provisioning in any cloud. Um, so really this is like an introduction to the cloud, cloud concepts, and the InterSystems Cloud Manager, and sort of what the problem it solves is and why we have it, right? So our goal here is, as I said, to really focus on the core concepts of what this thing is, the cloud, okay, what it is, why we have it, um, and then introduce InterSystems Cloud Manager through the lens of the problem that it's actually trying to solve, okay? And this isn't going to be an extensive review of the Cloud Manager or the cloud, but it's so, sort of supposed to be a taste for you guys and um, to get you interested and to use as a, a launching point for future learning, whether that be here at additional sessions or through our online learning experience or playing around with it yourself, um, whatever floats your boat. I'm a hands-on kind of guy. So first things first, let's talk about cloud computing. Um, as the buzzsaw goes off in the other room. Um, so I'll just talk really loudly um, and make it worse. OK, so um, <laughs> all right. So you saw on the main stage today that pretty much every presenter up there mentioned the word cloud. OK, but I think there's a little bit of a problem with the way that we in the software industry, as, as software people, talk about the cloud, in that it's become a buzzword. It's been around for so long that it's almost meaningless every time that we hear it, okay? So where I wanna start is very simple, and some of this might be too simple for you, but you know, stay with me, we're gonna build up. I wanna talk about really what the cloud is and, and what it means and what it's for, okay? So fundamentally, the cloud is someone else's computer, all right? This is a little simplified, Okay, but it doesn't matter whether it's Amazon's, Google's, Microsoft's, or if you're a big enough organization, someone else, um, you know, maybe a different wing of your company is providing you these things. The cloud is something that is, it's a computer that's not yours, or some other service which isn't yours. Okay, in addition, the second thing that makes the cloud the cloud is not only is it someone else's computer, but it's something that you're renting. So you're paying as you go, whether that be for storage, performance, uptime, whatever, okay? You're renting these, these services, this computer from some provider, okay? And finally, the cloud is programmatic access. So not only is it a virtual machine hosted by Amazon, but I can ask for one of those through a command line interface by hitting an API, by doing so um, programmatically. Okay, so these three things combine to be the cloud. Okay, so when anybody is talking about the cloud or using all those buzzwords, this is what they're really talking about. They're talking about renting things from these providers. Okay, so I mentioned a little bit on the previous slide that it's not, it's a little bit more than a computer, okay? So really what we're renting from these providers are what's called services. And so you'll see this acronym all the time, AAS, usually with some sort of letter in front of it, and these stand for different things that you can buy from these providers, okay? And these go all the way up the technology stack. So at the basis, we have infrastructure as a service. So virtual machines, networking, that sort of thing. Okay, this is maybe what you traditionally think of as the cloud. But it's even more than that, okay? You can have platforms as a service. So things like a database, a web server, development toolkit, that sort of thing. So you would rent that pre-built from your cloud provider and start moving with that, okay? Instead of having to sort of install the web server yourself, I say I'd like an Apache server, please, and it comes pre-configured. You add your configuration files, your custom code, whatever, but you're launching from the platform as opposed to a virtual machine, the infrastructure. And even higher up, we have software as a service or solution as a service. Um, it could be email, it could be games, it could be instant messenger. Your company actually might be providing this today, you know, might be hosting services or something like that. When they talk about HealthShare as a service, this is what they're talking about, right? A software solution provided for you as a service. So everything lower in the stack is abstracted away from you, is managed by your cloud provider and somebody else um, in conjunction, all right? And even higher up, we have cool new things like function as a service or machine learning as a service. So not only can I 
you know, get a platform or full, full software, I can provide my cloud provider arbitrary code to run. I can say, here's a function that adds two integers together and returns the results. Here you go. They'll host it, they'll run it, they'll publish the endpoint for me, and then they'll charge me per call of that function. But I don't need to worry about how it's being run, run where it's hosted, the performance of it, they guarantee all of that for me. Right? And just sort of to visualize, we have this full stack here. All right? So the story so far is we're renting these services from these cloud providers programmatically. So there's a promise here. Okay? And the promise of the cloud is that this is going to sort of launch our business into the future, or the present, maybe, um, in terms of what we can get out of the infrastructure that we have. So by renting these services and not managing this infrastructure ourselves, we're able to reduce the cost and complexity of our deployments. Okay? We're all, we're, we can be much more flexible and rapid with what we do. If I can ask for a virtual machine and get it in seconds from Amazon, I can scale up really, really quickly if I need to. Okay? Um, and as I said, in terms of computation, number of machines, but also storage, it, it becomes massively scalable. All right? And the promise here is that we'll be able to take that time and energy and money that we were putting into the infrastructure that we have and instead reinvest it in innovation and development, in building better tools, serving our customers better, building products that actually differentiate our company from our competitors, you know, the stuff that matters, right? So who here has done a cloud deployment? Was it that easy? Was it just snap your fingers? I don't think so, okay? So I think that there's a little bit of work that needs to be done here. Okay, so not only, you know, so we have enterprise solutions, right? So if we're starting small and we're building cloud first, it's really simple to just get up and running in this environment, okay? But we have enterprise software. We have, we meaning intersystems as well as you guys, are serving, you know, healthcare, government, business. This is really important and it's complex. Okay, so we can't just decide tomorrow that we're going to take everything that we own and these hundreds of machines that we have configured and suddenly put them on the cloud, okay? We're not gonna see this benefit. It's gonna take us a lot of time and energy and money, which, yeah, we'll be saving for how much it costs, but there's a lot of work that we're gonna need to do, okay? So just a little bit more on this complexity. Right? In order to do enterprise software deployments, we need to have you know, development environments. We need to have testing environments. We need to have production environments, and each of these serves different roles and has different people associated with them. So in development, we have developers writing new code. Testing, we have verification, looking for bugs, making sure those enhancements actually work the way they're supposed to. And then in production, we have the end users, okay? And the DBAs and the support people who are trying to maintain and actually serve our customers. And this, you know, is maybe more realistic. We have many development systems, maybe a laptops, okay? or a shared dev machine or a combination of both. We have different testing servers for different purposes. This one tests this, um, I don't know, this one tests the back end system, this one tends to test the front end, this one is for manual tests, this is one for developers to test their code, right? And then in production we have bigger machines that require more space and more resources to run and are probably more locked down in terms of security. Okay, so as an enterprise software company, you have these challenges in terms of actually getting your software out the door. And so if you want to move to someone else's computer, to the cloud, there's a lot of work that you have to do, where you have to be thinking very carefully about how you're going to be doing these deployments, is maybe a better way to say it. Because right? it's not necessarily work, but you have to be thinking because really your picture doesn't look like that. It looks like this. But actually, it really doesn't look like this. It, it looks like this. Okay. So enterprise software is complicated. It's hard. And this is just a natural fact of how this works. We have many machines. We have large organizations. We have system drift between all this stuff. Okay, and so getting this, you know, fulfilling the promise of the cloud to have that business savings to focus on innovation, we can't just take our 100 machines and snap our fingers and put them on the cloud. There has to be some sort of plan. We have to have some way to reconcile this business need of being on the cloud with the realities of software development, right? Because they're kind of out ahead. 
Is this making sense? Cool. So how are we going to do this? The way that we're going to get at this is what's called infrastructure as code. I'm going to explain what it is. It might be pretty obvious what it is. Um, it's infrastructure as code. Um, but the idea is to take sort of the boxes and arrows diagram of your software configuration. You know, maybe each one of those circles in the previous slide that all filled up was a sort of a five machine configuration. Now, if you're thinking of cache or iris, you might be thinking, okay, this looks like ECP or sharding or mirroring. It doesn't matter what it is, but we have five servers, each of the purple things, and we have blue cylinders, which are installations of our database. Okay? So we want to take this thing, and we want to turn it into code. All right? That's what we want to do. And this is going to allow us to take advantage of those programmatic access to those services so that we can sort of ease the, the pain of all of that configuration management we need to do for our enterprise development process. All right, so why do, why do we want to do it? Okay, well, first of all, code is repeatable. So if I do this deployment and it creates my five machines, I can recreate it again at a moment's notice. I need to set up a new developer, a new end user, a new testing system, I just run my code, okay? It's also scalable, okay, and this may be similar to repeatable, but within the configuration I'm talking about. So if I need to go from five machines to six machines, if I have the code, if I had that codified, it's changing one number, right? And there's no manual work involved. Well, you might have to run the script, but you know, because you're accessing this programmatic API, you know, there isn't any sort of manual configuration happening. And finally, it's portable, okay? So we can do so on any underlying hardware, any cloud provider, if we do our job right. right. So this is why we want to codify. We want to have infrastructure as code in order to help us fulfill that promise of the cloud, to actually do what the CEOs and, and the, the finance people want us to do by moving to this platform. We actually need to you know, have a technical solution to how we're going to do that. And in addition to that, we get all the fun stuff of traditional software deployment. So if you're a developer um, or have been in a previous life, you, you've learned to love version control and peer review and you know, automated testing and continuous delivery. But we don't get that unless we have the code for our infrastructure. And this allows us to bring these tried and true um, development practices, which have been worked out through many years with traditional software, to the infrastructure that we're deploying. Right? So agile, scrum, whatever you want to call it, for our infrastructure. So, just a little bit more. There's some visualizations that are kind of simple here. Um, so repeatable. If I need two of these things, I run, my, I run my code twice. In fact, if I need 200, I can run my code 200 times. All right, so this is infrastructure as code. It's repeatable. Not only is it repeatable, it's scalable. As I said, if I need to add two more, oh, I, I forgot the lines. Damn, OK. Well, we have seven machines. I change the number in my file from five to seven, and I redeploy, okay? So this is what infrastructure as code allows us to do. It allows us to actually you know, scale up in the way that the cloud promises us we can. And then finally, it's portable. With our products as well as other products, you can codify this in, um, with some care and actually be able to deploy it on any platform. So if today um, AWS is the cheapest, run it there. If tomorrow you have an end user who requires Azure, or maybe on-premises pre-configured stuff, you should be able to run your code there as well. So this is, this is the idea. This is why we want infrastructure as code. So is this making sense so far? Questions? Cool. So the Cloud Manager. All the InterSystems Cloud Manager is, when, and I'll use ICM moving forward, because InterSystems Cloud Manager is a mouthful is infrastructure as code for Iris. Okay, so it's bringing these principles of repeatability, portability, scalability, um, trying to get at that, that collision between enterprise deployments and um, the promise of the cloud um, to Iris itself. Okay, so not only is it gonna provision hardware for you, but it's also going to configure Iris for you. So mirroring, sharding, spark, load balancers, web servers. Um, this, is, this is sort of what the cloud manager does. It's going to bring these, these infrastructure as code concepts which exist outside of our products, 
and bring them to, to Inner Systems Iris. And it's not just vanilla Iris, okay? It's any Iris-based container application. So I'm gonna stop here. Who here um, is familiar with containers? Oh, okay, actually, it's a lot of you. All right, um, so it's a prereq for this class. Um, if not a lot of you raised your hand, I would have talked about them. Um, they're just a way of packaging software. Um, we can talk more afterwards if you're interested. Um, anyway, so if you build on top of an Iris application, you customize it, you add your code, your custom production to it, um, whatever it is, REST app, um, you're able to deploy that and configure it in mirroring, sharding, et cetera, with ICM as well, okay? And it also provides this freedom of choice um, stuff here. So it's compatible with existing provisioning tools. Um, so if you have a pipeline already for this stuff, ICM should be able to fit in with what you're doing um, in some capacity, either as just configuring Iris or um, filling some other role for you. Um, and so the marketing here is batteries included but swappable. So if you don't have any of this and you want to get started with it, you can get running out of the box. But if you, you know, if you have something already, which you might, um, then this can sort of be compatible with what you need, okay? But handle some of the Iris-specific stuff that previously was challenging to do. So, how does it work? This is a confusing picture, I think. But let's go through it. So there are four steps to deploying your application with ICM, okay? First, is, can I do this? Yeah, there we go. First is creating a custom image. This is a container image based on Iris. So for my demo, which I'm gonna do in a minute, I'm gonna use vanilla Iris, just to keep it simple, okay? Then from my custom image, I'm going to, well, knowing what my custom image is, I'm going to create configuration templates. So there are two files which are going to, one of them is gonna be our infrastructure as code, and the other one is gonna be sort of a deployment specific file. Things like our cloud provider, our credentials, specific VM image, that sort of thing, okay? Then once I have those, I load them into ICM, which is itself going to run as a container on a local laptop or some or other machine that's sort of driving this provisioning process. Um, and then there are two commands. There's ICM provision, which will create the underlying infrastructure, okay? So the virtual machines, get them networked, ready to go for our Iris deployment, and then run will actually deploy our Iris containers on them, okay? And so this is where sort of if you have existing tool sets you can fit in here, um, you know, you don't have to do the provision with ICM. It could be pre-existing or something like that, okay? So as I said, there are two configuration files, and I'm gonna take you through them, and then these are the ones I'm gonna use in my demo, okay? So the first is definitions.json, okay? This thing is the infrastructure as code file. It's going to take our boxes and arrows diagram, and it's going to turn it into code, okay? So here I have a data master and two data shards. This is a sharding, simple sharding configuration. It's not really that important, other than these things are networked together and connected through ECP. Um, and then over here, we have the code representation of it. So I say, I have a data master, I have one of them, here's the license, and then I have two data shards, okay? So let's go back here. So this is sort of our normalized infrastructure as code file. This thing is gonna be the, the thing that's platform independent that sort of exists and describes our configuration outside of the specifics of what's actually gonna be deployed. So nowhere in here am I saying which container image to run, which virtual machine to base it on, what cloud provider, what my credentials are, what the default password is, okay? All of that stuff is in the second file, okay? The defaults file, okay? This is gonna be the stuff that's deployment specific. So if I had a test system and a prod system, I might have different ones of these files or different end users, I might have different specific files for my defaults, but that definitions file that actually describes my infrastructure will be the same in those deployments, okay? And here we have things like, I don't know, the provider, how big I want my data to be, or my volumes to be, what my SSH user is, that sort of thing, okay? Does this make sense? So these two kind of combine to be the actual deployments, but this one is the one that's actually infrastructure as code. 
rather this along with the script that runs this stuff. Okay, so now I have this picture up, which means it's time for the demo. So I didn't actually um, uh, shard, a data shard, yeah. And if you're interested in learning about sharding, um, there's sessions on it, as well as uh, come talk to me afterwards and I can point you in the right direction. Um, so I actually videotaped my demo because I don't trust the internet. Also, it takes a little while. Um, because it's not magic, it takes about 10 minutes to do the whole provision, unprovision um, cycle here. Um, but this way I can stop and talk about what's happening as we go through. Okay, um, so first things first, I'm gonna get that ICM container, okay? So from that picture that I put up on the board, it was my, a picture of the laptop that said it was running ICM, okay? So here, I'm building a custom container image, but the important thing for you to know is that I'm extending from the ICM 2018-1, okay? So this is just uh, the container image that's available from us on our distribution site, soon to be available in the Docker store. Um, and then I'm running some scripts to generate some keys, get my license, and then I'm copying in um, that defaults file that we talked about, okay? Um, and actually the definitions file, that infrastructure is code file, is the, the generic sample that comes with the container. So if you pull this thing and you start looking around, you'll see that there are samples in here, and the one I'm running in my demo is just the sample, okay? So I'm gonna build this thing now. Um, as you can watch me type in the past. Um, so all this is gonna do is execute that manifest, ex pull down that container image um, from you know, our internal repository, and then it's going to execute that stuff to build me a new container image to run. So this is just an additional step that I'm doing to make my life easier as I deploy, you know, moving forward, because I'm gonna mount things like, um, you know, my demo scripts and stuff. So the build process is done now. Um, you can see it told us what it did. Oh, I cleared the screen, it's all right. Um, and then here, all right, hold up. And here we're actually executing the docker run command. So what I'm doing here is taking that image that I just built, um, where, which is called demo ICM, okay? And I'm giving it a name. I'd like to run it. I'm giving it a name. I wanna do so interactively. Um, I wanna remove it when I'm done with it. And then there's this um, configuration stuff here. And then I'm mounting this volume um, which contains my demo scripts, okay? So what this is gonna do is start that instance of that container image that I had and dump us into a shell at, in that, inside that container. So once I, once I do a PSEF here to prove it to you, there are only four processes in this container. So we, you know, if I did it on my normal Mac machine, there would be about 100, right? So this proves that we're actually inside this running container, okay? And so from here, we're actually going to do the provision, okay? So we're gonna pass in that definitions file and the defaults file, oh yeah, to, to actually provision those virtual machines and then install our application. Um, and here I'm showing you what ICM actually is. It's, it's a command line interface. So you can see that we have lots of options. So the ones that we're gonna use are provision, and uh, provision, unprovision at the end to delete everything and run, okay? So provision is gonna create the compute nodes, the virtual machines and all that stuff and then the run is actually going to create and start the containers, okay? Um, but there's, you can see there's all sorts of other options, so as a development tool, you can use this at, uh, to iterate over configurations. So create them, test them, destroy them, play around with them, figure out what's going wrong so that you can sort of create the infrastructure as code that you need. So as a development tool, ICM allows you to do, do this stuff as well. It's not just for production deployments. In fact, it's very useful um, through the development process as well. Okay. Um, there's some other options as well. Uh, it's all documented. If you need resources, I can come talk to me and I can help you. Um, so now I'm gonna actually execute my script. And here I'm just showing you that I'm in fact uh, running the config files that I showed you before. Uh, a little bit more complicated. I simplified them to fit them on the slide. Okay, so now I'm gonna execute my provision here, which is actually going to, again, take 
take this configuration information up here, which, uh, and, and this definitions file, and turn them into virtual machines for me, okay? Uh, oh yeah, and here I show you, I'm provisioning to Google Cloud. You don't really need to know much about this interface other than it's a cloud interface and it tells you what virtual machines are running, and I have none. So I'm just basically proving to you that I'm actually provisioning these things. Because you know it's a video and you, know, you might not believe me. So this takes about five minutes. So here I get to um, fast forward. You see it's all doing, it's doing all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, so here we can see that when it's done, it runs an ICM inventory command, which is gonna tell me what it provisioned, what the IP addresses of them are, and the DNS name. So you can see I, it created three machines for me, the data master, and then the two data shards here, and they're named like this based on that configuration file I passed in. Here are their IP addresses, and here are their DNS names, okay? And it gives me, helpfully, a command to destroy it if I'd like to copy and paste and tear it all down to try again. Okay, uh, next is the run. Remember with the run, it's going to actually pull your container images from a repository um, and then start running them on the machines and make sure that they're configured correctly. You know, all of that Iris stuff that we talked about in terms of configuration specific stuff, mirroring, et cetera, that's gonna happen with the run. Um, so I start it here and then I forgot to show you that my um, VMs are an act actually provisioned here. Um, or did I do that here? So yeah, here we go. We actually have our, now that I've provisioned, we actually have our virtual machines. They're up and running. We can see them in the cloud um, interface. I'm running the run, and then this again takes about a minute. And now that we've deployed our application, uh, oh, this isn't the end, sorry. Oop. Now that we've deployed our application, it gives us a link to the management portal uh, where we can go. So this is what I'm doing. I'll copy and paste it here. And we can see that we actually have configured Iris in the cloud uh, in a sharding configuration. Um, so this, the rest of the video just kind of bangs around at the, at, you know, in the management portal to show you that it's actually configured correctly, it's licensed, and it's running healthy. So, so yeah. So. Does anybody have any questions at this point about kind of what's going on here, that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. I can repeat that. So um, his question was, when you do the unprovision, how does it know what to unprovision? Um, so when ICM. Um, when you're executing ICM commands, the provision will create what's called a state directory, which contains information about what was provisioned. So you can have multiple things provisioned, multiple configurations provisioned from the same ICM container, um, but you would go to that state directory and say, unprovision this one, or give me information about this specific one that I provisioned, okay? And actually, I show that to you here in a minute. So I'm gonna do the ICM, so, so in the directory where I did my run command, or my provision command, there was this state directory created here. And it contains a bunch of information. We can talk more about it later if you want. Um, but basically, um, I run this on provision, and I point it to that state directory, and then it will tear down what it configured. Okay, so this allows me to do that developer iteration. So if I'm not sure that this is the configuration I want, or I'm working through some problems, I can, I mean the cycle here is about 10 minutes, I can provision tens of machines, make sure they're working correctly or not, tear it all down, and start again. Um, internally in our QD, um, we use this to do testing on our containers. And so we spin up a bunch of stuff, beat on them, tear them down, right? that sort of thing. And so here we're just tearing everything down, and I can, it's sort of the reverse operation of that provision, and I can then show you here that my virtual machines are, in fact, gone. And then this will time out here. Um, cool. So back to my slides quickly. Yeah, so again, this, this is basically what went on. I used vanilla iris here. I used the defaults plus a custom 
um, GCP config file that says, you know, these are my credentials, run this thing, right? And then I did this run, a provision and run here to actually create these machines, and then I did an unprovision to tear it all down, okay? So just to recap, okay, the reason we're talking about the cloud, um, I mean, when I say we here, I mean the industry, but also intersystems, is that there's this promise here that's gonna help our businesses in the future to take time and energy and money that we were putting into our infrastructure, managing and maintaining it, and then turn it into uh, innovation and development and make our products better, okay, serve our customers better. Um, but that's sort of out ahead with the realities of enterprise software deployment. It's not so simple to just snap our fingers and suddenly we're on the cloud, okay? So we need something to help us with that, right? And what we're gonna do is infrastructure as code. So we're gonna codify our architecture so that it's repeatable, redeployable, versionable, all that great stuff. And what InterSystems Cloud Manager is, is, a, is an infrastructure as code tool for Iris specifically, okay? So just to plug the other stuff, please fill out the survey. Um, there's a session recording and visit the Tech Exchange. Um, I also have a flash talk later today at four, which is out like by the, the check-in stuff um, where I'll be talking about the technical specifics of what, it, what a container is and that sort of thing. So if you're, you know, if you want to learn more about kind of how it actually works in the kind of a buzzword free way, come to that. Um, if you like my presentation style, or me, just in general, yeah. Yeah, so the question is, what's the best way to start learning how to build those definition files to actually start playing with this tool? Um, so I would say that there are two good ways. Um, the first is there's, well, there's a bunch of different ways. We have a first look um, on ICM, which is on our documentation, which is sort of traditional, take you through how to set this thing up and play with it. Um, then we have a learning experience. If you go to learning com um, and you search for ICM, you'll find it, or InterSystems Cloud Manager or Cloud or Containers, it'll come up, and that sort of takes you through. There's like an online sandbox that you can do, but if you pull our container image from your, um, from the distribution site, um, you can just follow through that on your own. Um, and then from there, it's usually about kind of, at least for me, having a problem that I wanna solve or something I wanna test with and play with, right? Um, so sort of building off those samples that are in the container, there'll be slash samples, and there'll be samples for GCP, AWS, Azure, pre-existing. So you can look at those to see how it works and what's necessary, as well as the documentation, sort of get yourself up and running. Okay, so there are two questions there. The first question is, is this just for Iris? And the answer to that question is yes. Okay, and then the second question is, so it's not for HealthShare, why? Um, I don't know if I'm quite qualified to answer that question, other than to say, you know, we have plans to move HealthShare to Iris in the future, um, and so once that happens, this will become available for those tools, and so. I'm guessing that it's probably because the Iris is architected for, to leverage containers in a way that Yes, HealthShare. right, and so this requires you to have a containerized application, which you can build your own, of course, and deploy with ICM. You can also deploy container lists if you want and just specify a VM image that's ready to go. You can do that as well. Um, but there is no distributed um, cache ensemble container image or health share container image. Um, and so once those become available, then it becomes possible, but also there's a difference in sort of how you do the configuration and the naming of things and, and such. The interfaces are different, and so it's not as simple as um, porting it to that. Um, and so really, my understanding is the wait is until HealthShare becomes a sort of iris-based. So. Um, so the question is, are we looking to, um, to develop a, a user interface front end for ICM? Uh, at this time, my understanding is no um, to that. It's really intended to be for a developer at a command line interface simple things, or if you're plugging it into an existing continuous integration or development pipeline, you would be just scripting with this tool. And so, so yes, at the beginning you might want that stuff, but in terms of production and how you're gonna use it, we don't expect it to be manual because part of the point is to be automating this as, as best we can, right? Um, um, okay, so 
I'll rephrase that and you can tell me if it's right. So the question is, is there um, in the future support for um, elasticity in these configurations? So scaling up um, in particular, but also scaling down. I believe, and maybe Steve, is, is Steve here? It scales up right now, so you can increase the number and reapply, um, and it will increase the number of machines that you have. So you can add a shard, you can do the sort of things that you want to do in terms of up. I don't believe down works right now. Um, no, okay. Um, so in terms of automating that, um, Right now, there's no, nothing to sort of look at the load and automatically go up. Um, of course, if you write something that does that for you and decides you need more compute nodes, you, all you have to do is you know, change a number in a file and reprovision. But right now, there isn't sort of any interactive stuff. It kind of builds a thing for you, and it can tear it down, and then you can use it to connect to different things, but it's not actively you know, monitoring what's going on. Well, thanks, everybody. Um, come find me afterwards or at the bar, wherever. Um, I'd love to talk about this stuff, so thanks.